Hey guys, Travis here again with Lucky Tackle Box. And today we're breaking down the basics in spooning. And no, I'm not talking about your old fishing partner, we've all had it, that uh, ditches you every single time he starts dating a new girl and you know he is uh, sitting on the couch spooning with her watching Netflix chick flicks all night long and he's too tired to get up to go fishing every morning. Um, but if you want, you can go ahead and tag him in this video. So I have a message for him right now. If you got tagged by your buddy in this video and you're watching right now, it's because he's sick and tired of being ditched for every new girl that comes along. You gotta make time for both of us in your life, all right? Today, we're actually gonna be talking about real spooning for real bass. And there's two things that actually happen this time of the year. Uh, when that weather starts to cool down in the fall, the first thing that happens is I lose my perfectly even mocha colored tan that I've been working on all summer long. But the second thing that happens is probably more relevant to you guys is that hordes of bait fish cruise into the back of these creek channels and coves and all the bass start schooling up to feed on these easy meals. The chaos of all these bass coming through the bait fish and everything, what happens is any time these little uh, shad and things get wounded, they flutter down to the bottom as they die. And that's what we're gonna be imitating today with Johnson Slam a Spoon. So let's break down this awesome fall technique starting with rigging. When you tie the slam spoon on, all you use is just a Palomar knot. Real easy setup. And any spoon I use, I really like using a barrel swivel because there's a lot of twist that happens with these spoons. So if you have a barrel swivel, you're not gonna twist up as much in your line. And that's what's great about these uh, slam spoons is they come with a barrel spoon or, or a barrel swivel already rigged up. Um, the next is I start with a, uh, I got a Daiwa Tatula 6.3 to one gear ratio. Uh, the speed of the gear ratio is not that important because really you're doing most of your action just uh, at one level. Um, then I spool up with uh, eight to 10 pound mono or fluorocarbon. I, I like a very thin diameter line that allows my bait to get down there quickly and also allows that action to really happen with that fluttering. Whereas uh, you know heavier lines tend to restrict the amount of movement a lure can do. Uh, then I pair that up on a cranking rod. I've got Castaway seven foot cranking stick because we've talked about this many times. Anytime we use treble hooks, we really want a rod with a good parabolic bend, which means it has a lot of give that can absorb those fish when they're running. A big thing that happens when fish make their runs on a treble hook, if the rod is too stout, it'll actually pull that hook right out of there. You want a rod to really absorb that so they can't get the leverage to yank that hook out. So retrieval is pretty simple. Let this bait just fall all the way to the bottom and you wanna watch to see if your, uh, if your line actually stops sinking. That either means you're on the bottom or a fish just grabbed it. And uh, either way, uh, the second it stops falling, I just give it a jerk. Um, because that's what you're gonna be doing is you're hopping this bait off the bottom and then you're letting it fall on slack line and, and that slack line is gonna make that bait really just uh, flutter back down to the bottom. Um, I usually kind of mix it up a little bit. I'll give it a couple little, uh, you know, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, he came off, he came off. Oh no, he's, what the, oh, I got one on there. Oh, he came up quick. <laughs> nice. As this bait's falling, it's mimicking that wounded bait. And that's exactly what we're trying to um, present these fish with this time of the year because that's what they're honed into. Now, as soon as my line stops sinking, I'm watching my line. If it stops sinking, I want to reel in the slack and I want to jerk it up. Because reality, there's two things that have happened. So it just, it just, there we go. See, there's only two things that could happen when it hit, when it stops sinking. Either a fish is on or it's on the bottom. And once it's on the bottom, it needs to be jerked up anyway. But this fish, this fish hit it on the way down there. And when I jerked up, I hooked it. So when it comes to location, you really gotta know what these fish are up to this time of the year. And what we already talked about earlier is they are chasing and they're following the bait up into these creek channels and these coves. Uh, a lot of times that coves with uh, marinas in the back can be great because those fish can kind of suspend under the docks, that the bait kind of congregates around there as well. So those can be uh, nice high percentage areas. And then the usual ways of telling if there's bait in the area, you wanna look for uh, just signs of life. Uh, if there's a lot of um, egrets or if there's the little diving birds that are uh, going down for bait fish and stuff, it means there's gonna be bait fish. If you can see the bait fish feeding on the surface in the morning or the evening times, then there's gonna probably be bass in that area as well. Also, if you can just visually see the bait fish, little balls swimming around, that's gonna be a great, uh, a high percentage cove or creek channel to start in. 
Um, also, I have a graph, so I'm actually doing a lot of my work on the graph. You have a good graph, you can see these bait fish, and you can see these uh, bass, and you'll even be able to see, if you're really tuned into your graph, you'll even be able to see your bait go all the way down, and if it goes by fish, you'll see fish nose down on it and chase it all the way down to the bottom, and, and you'll even, you know, you'll know that you're about to get a bite. Um, what you're gonna do from the shore is you're just gonna make casts out into open water, and you're gonna let the bait sink all the way to the bottom, and once it hits the bottom, just rip it off. Just like I'm fishing vertically, you're gonna do it uh, actually while casting out horizontally. I'm gonna follow it down. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm trying to watch my line sink. Holy cow, that was, I hope we got that on camera. I hope you can see the line. That was cool. Guys, nice little fat large mouth right there. Um, great technique, you guys. A lot of people are aware of spooning, but a lot of people uh, just don't realize the right times to do it and the key locations. And if you really get that, you'll get some confidence going and this can be a great tool in your arsenal. Uh, once again, guys, if you like this video, give us, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Travis Moran with Lucky Tackle Box and I'll see you next time.